Hi, I'm Dan and welcome to the Airbrush Garage. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, thanks for coming back. Today, I'm gonna to show you my take on how I like to do feathers. There's two ways to go about this process. You can do a freehand or you can do a subtractive technique like I'm gonna show you here today. Now, I do them both ways, but I actually do prefer this method. In a future video, I'll show you how I do them freehand. But today, I'm gonna to be doing a subtractive technique and I'm also gonna be showing you how I use real feathers as my template. So if that's something you're interested in, please stick around. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that bell so you get future notification. A thumbs up would be great. A couple comments, good or bad, really helps out with the YouTube algorithm and helps this channel grow. Don't forget to check out all my Amazon affiliate links down below for the products I use in this video and all my other videos. And with that, let's get started. All right, so before we get started, all of the feathers that I got here to use as my templates, feathers that I collected from outside throughout the years, you know, outside my yard or walking along, if I've seen a feather, this one here, this big one here happens to be a goose feather. I really never used that one before, but so I collected all different types uh, and sizes of feathers. And as you'll see here, I have a couple different types and sizes of feathers. And you can pick up feathers at your local Hobby Lobby as well or online. You know, there's a lot of videos out there where they show you how to make feathers with a bunch of dagger strokes, and I'm okay with that. It's just not happened to be the way that I would choose to make feathers. So something I really want you to note here, and something that I have observed with a feather is that I don't see a lot of dagger strokes in a feather when I look at it. I actually see a lot of solidness to a feather. Yes, if you honed in on it with a microscope, you see all these little lines, but a lot of times that's not what you're shooting for in a painting. So what I'm gonna show you today is I'm gonna use this as a template, and these are really cool because What's going to give the feather appearance or the feather-like appearance is a lot of this down at the bottom where, you know, it's not real uniform and maybe like the little split in here where you catch a little bit of, you know, white in between the feather. So you're going to have the vein. That's going to be very important as well. So again, no matter what feather you look at, this one's a pretty one. It has blue on the one side and black on the other with a white tip. But again, it's, you know, shaded and colored, but you don't see a lot of quote, separate dagger strokes, at least I don't. So that's what I'm gonna be showing you today. Let's get right into it. I'm gonna keep it simple. I got some Wicket Detail Black here by Createx loaded up in my gun. And I got 4011 Reducer to go with it as well by Createx. Mix it about 20% for now and we'll see how it goes. I usually start with about 10, 20% of Reducer and I will reduce down from there depending on how it's flowing. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with one of the bigger feathers. And I'm just going to use this again as a template just to get some structure to the feather and shape. So I'm just going to mist over that lightly just to get my shape. All right, so there you go. You can see the difference in the structures of some of these feathers already, but you can see how it gives you that nice, soft, you know, feather look. So now what we're going to have to do is going to come in, and we're going to have to put the stem in, and then we'll start rendering it in. All right, so the next step, what I did was I just took a pencil, and I put the feather underneath, and I just ran over the feather with the feather underneath the paper, so I get a line of the vein. Then I'll just go and I'll cut that out, so then I can come in here, and I can just place it right down in along and, you know, get a nice little outline of where my vein's going to be before I go in and render. So I'll do that on each feather. And this feather and this feather, even though they're two different feathers, you can use the same curve. So you'll find where you won't have to cut, you know, every vein for every individual feather. And most of the times you're going to be using, you know, just maybe two feathers to do whatever you're doing, two or three feathers. That's why I got a couple different ones here for you. 
So I'll be right back. I'll cut those out quick. All right, so what I wind up with here is my positive and negative templates that I'm going to be using for my veins. And then you also have, obviously, your feathers here to look at for rendering. All right, now that I get everything laid in here and I got the structure built, now I'm going to come in here and render. So there's, you know, a lot of different ways people do these. I know, again, I'll repeat again that I can come in here and freehand dagger strokes, dagger strokes, and, you know, fill it in and keep layering. That's kind of a time-consuming way. It's not a bad way to do it, but I also do like the eraser techniques. I happen to like eraser techniques. I think they make things look very realistic. So I have my feather right up top here. As a reference. So again, a lot of this I'm going to come in here and render with color. A lot of it is solid, you know, to the eye, especially at a distance. You know, you're not going to see the very fine lines in a feather unless you get really super up close to it. So I will come in here and just make a little bit of texture. You can sharpen some lines with this eraser if you needed to because you want to keep some lines sharp, you want to keep some lines soft. I did forget to mention, I am using TerraSlate paper. It is an airbrush paper. Its eraser qualities are very good. It's very smooth, fairly thick paper. Uh, I use this paper to do a lot of renderings on eraser techniques, scratching techniques. You can come in here if you want something really fine, like some fine little, you know, hairs, you can come in here. This happens to be a fiberglass scratcher. I can come in here with an X-Acto blade as well to get even finer lines. Just going to come in here quick on this one, keeping it soft, but yeah, crisping up some of the edges. Again, I'm going to come back in here freehand. some shading in on it. It's real subtle, but you're building texture as I'm defining the vein here. And as I'm defining the vein, I'm coming off in the direction of the feathers, defining some texture. And as if you saw any of my other videos, airbrush to me is all about layering. So this is only the very first base layer of quite a few layers to come. But you want to start building your texture up on the very first layer, as subtle as it may be, because that's all going to lend to it later on. You know, when you first start airbrushing, as I did as well, you saw everybody doing the really cool pictures and you just wanted, you know, you thought you were just going to put paint on the page one time and you're going to have that pretty picture. and you learn with airbrushing, you got to be patient. If you want a really cool effect, a lot of times it just takes patience and it takes a lot of layers. Now you can't see it, it's off camera, but I clean off my eraser on my jeans every so often to get the black 
or whatever color you're using off the tip of the eraser. This is an aggressive eraser. I will put a link down below for the tools that I'm using in this video. All right, now that I finished the first layer and the texturing of the first layer, I'm looking pretty happy with it. As you can see, I got a feather up here for reference, and I got, I got my other feathers actually laying right down here out of camera's eye, but I'm gonna be referring to those feathers quite often just to you know see the flow and the texture of the feather. So you really want to, again, look at your reference of your feathers. And a lot of times, you know, feathers don't just dagger stroke out in an arc. What they're doing is they're almost like a big elongated S. So it come, they'll come out and then back towards the front of the feather. So that's a very common, you know, feather stroke or feather layout. A lot of the feathers that you look at will do that. And as you start getting towards the front of the feather, it'll start to straighten out a little bit more. You just see, you start building some really nice texture and you start bringing it to life. Now I will say this particular tool, fiberglass tool or scratcher really does give you a different effect than the you know razor blades or uh, aggressive erasers what i mean by razor blades i mean an exacto blade it just gives you you know you can get hard crisp lines with it you can get softer edges with it and i have a couple different thicknesses of these but what's really cool about it is if you look at it and a lot of people say it's dangerous because the fibers break off but there's all these little different you know it's a bunch of little tiny fibers put together so once it softens up a little bit at the edge, you kind of get a really cool soft effects with it, depending on how you hold it. And I don't find it real dangerous because I don't use it, you know, on a daily basis where I'm scratching and I'm doing a lot of heavy scratches where it's going in the air. So I kind of disagree with that a little bit. So you can see as I'm building the texture, how, you know, the life and the realism of it starts to pop out. Now, again, I'm going to hit this with a couple more layers and we're really going to, you know, render it in. But... When I view a feather, as I said before, I can do a feather with all dagger strokes and do a quick feather. But if I'm going for something realistic, when you really look at a feather again, it's more texture. It's not so much dagger strokes. Now, you could say that I'm putting the dagger strokes in with, you know, the, the tools I'm using. But I'm layering it, and it gives it that much more depth and texture. Because, again, when you look at a feather, you see these very, very fine lines if you're looking it up close. And actually... A tool like this is what's going to give me the very, very fine lines and the texture lines that I'm looking for to make it as realistic as possible.
there you have it. My take on how to do feathers is the subtractive technique. I really like this technique because of the fact you can just keep playing around with it for as long as you want to just keep, you know, layering and texturing for as long as you want. You can put as little or as much effort into it as you really want, depending on the results you're looking for. So with that, I hope you got something from this video. If you did, again, please consider subscribing. Hit that bell. Thumbs up. A couple comments, good or bad. You guys know the drill. We're growing, and I really appreciate it. And with that, we'll see you in the next video.